you can do it yourself. And that's that's actually the topic of today's uh, meeting after 15 minutes prelude. <laughs> uh, so more than two hours, uh, no more than two hours coming now. Okay, <laughs> don't be afraid, it's not so long. So about pump engineering. Uh, Andash had a good definition for that. I just wanted to show you that there might be different definitions for that. For example, there is a dictionary definition for the prompt engine, for the prompting itself. What is a prompt? To make something happen. That is in the dictionary. And then some other things that it can be a mind or an instruction or a cue or whatever. <coughs> but that is from the dictionary. What would be the more scientific definition? Scientific, I mean, from language model point of view. And that is actually the same definition on that uh, showed us last time that mapping the tasks input. I mean, what's coming from the task, like style of Metallica or something, to the language model inputs. Somehow translate that, the language model can do something with that. And then having a bit rather, let's say, practical definition of that, this is the map of how you communicate with the language model, how we tell something to the language model in order to get the, to get the answer what we really want. But because sometimes it's not easy to get the answer what we want. Or a kind of answer. Uh, what not. Okay, what is the, pro uh, the goal of the prompt? Okay, it's not a big deal. After that, make something happen. But, okay, make something happen. But to make something happen, we provide some input. Because based on some, we, we, we don't just want something to happen and we don't care what happens. We really want something spe special or, or or predefined happen, and for that we give input into the prompt. What else we do? We help or guide or steer somehow the execution of that task what we want to give to the model, and also the interaction if in the case of a chat GPT, for example. And then we try to provide the accuracy, narrowing down the space in which the model gives the answer in order to, to get the right answer. And of course, we try to reduce the bias. The other side of that, that uh, you know, that in some cases the model has some biases, and we, we try to reduce that, try to minimize that with the prompt. So that's the goal of the prompt. But what is the anatomy? How a prompt looks like, or should look like, at least? And these are just aspects. You may know or find more aspects to that. Uh, and some of those are quite important. Some of those are optional. Let's say you will see. But anyhow, some kind of structure would always help for, for you to, to craft the prompt. First is the context. Since we use the capability of the model to, to keep in mind, let's say, the context, in context learning, learn from the context what we talk about, that as, for example, in ChatGPT, we follow the chat. The more information we give, the more chat is going on with the model, the model knows more about what do we want. So using that, it's important to give to the model the context. What is the background? Where we are? Like maybe you remember, I gave to the model that now we are at the customer service. That's a background. That's kind of a context. Different conversation should happen in the customer service than at home, for example. OK, the second one is the persona. It's a bit connected to the context because, of course, in a certain context, certain personas can be imagined. But still, point to a persona and through the personal later on, you will see point to the behavior you expect. That's quite important. Persona can be you are a, a customer service <coughs> agent. So yes, you, you are as a helpful assistant. And I am the user yeah. asking you something. Okay, what else? Of course, we need to give the task. Okay, now we know where we are, who is who, but what to do? That's, that's the most important part of that. And it can be different, like a question, asking something. Saying, instructing to do something, or steering somehow, do it this way, or do it that way. Uh, what could help? It's op for example, this one, which is optional. We can give some examples, showing either what kind of uh, task, what kind of good result would be from the task. On the other hand, what kind of personal um, uh, behavior is expected, or something. Anyhow, examples would help the model, what do we expect? By the way, this is where the fusion learning part comes in. If you give give enough examples, then it becomes fusion learning because the yeah, yeah. more examples you give, the, these the are the fusions actually. Yeah. <laughs> these are the so, fusions actually. So basically, yes. the expected input and output pairs, 
Uh, interestingly enough, that there is a paper which we didn't mark, but we could have, uh, that examined the, the relationship between do you have to do a right job, a good job in giving right out inputs and right outputs. Uh, and it turned out to be that if the, the total, like the, the bunch of outputs is realistic, the bunch of uh, expected labels is realistic, it doesn't really matter which is compared to what. Uh -huh. Because the, the general knowledge of the model will override that part. Uh -huh. It basically, if you give the right label space and if you give the right input space, then that will figure out. Uh -huh. But but that's very sensitive. If you give a different label space or a different input space, for that it's sensitive. For, uh, so, you, so you mean that like if I say least countries and capitals, then I give a wrong example. Yeah, the, 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 the wrong the wrong thing doesn't matter if you just say bother it is like. Italy, yeah. that doesn't matter, but it, it should be Badrin and it should be a, 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 yeah, a country. And, uh, country city and city country. should be there. The mapping is like it overrides it. Oh, okay. Which I think in a case when you play with the Chen GPT, it's not really so interesting because you as a human can give examples in pairs. You know, it comes to mind, your mind that Spain and, you know, or, or Italy and uh, the capital of that. But when we come to the let's say, to the business application of that, it's quite, quite often that we find that data separately. So there is no, no, no matching between them. It's, it's quite often to find like that. So it's a good, good thing to use. OK, we, uh, beyond the examples, it's important to, and again, it's a bit connected to the context and the persona, what is the behavior, what we, what we expect uh, from the model, and also the constraints. That's important, like size. Do you remember in the example I told the model that Summarize that song in one sentence. That's a constraint. You have only one sentence. I didn't uh, uh, set how long sentence, but still one sentence in, in that. So that's kind of a constraint. Then what is again optional, but at least we we uh, perceive. But I think I already read in some paper as well that definition of good is a is a very good way of steering the model. What could be a definition of good like? You know, giving weight to something or balance uh, between how specific should even the model. An easy uh, uh, sentence example for that: the shorter is the better. That's a kind of a definition of good. You know, right summary is the shorter is the better. Yeah, and it, you will see in the here in the example. Uh, uh, okay, last one. Sorry, I, I missed that. If that task requires some step to follow. Here it's good to say that this is the order, this, uh, these are the steps I expect you to do. You will see that later on, in some cases, I told the model that first always greet the customer. Mm -hmm. And then the model always starts with that, that hello or good afternoon or something. By the way, this step behavior will come back because in many cases, even when there are no natural steps, it helps when you decompose. Yes, yes. So that means exactly. that will come back again. Okay. I think you can hardly read that, but I will tell you what is there. So I told you that you will act as an agent at customer service. That's the <coughs> context and at the same time one persona defined it here. You will answer, here is the task, you will answer questions from the users, another persona. Uh, with simple instructions, again, constraint, it should be simple. Uh, Instructions referring to the service contract, so assuming that there is a service contract somewhere else. Uh, you should be polite and helpful. Uh, try to speak clearly. I mean the behavior and the constraints again. Always read the user first, the steps. So I, I intentionally constructed this prompt to show you this. There is no real meaning behind this uh, prompt, just to... to, to uh, and the shorter is the better is also there. Examples saying that, okay, user says that, when should I pay my bill? And the agent says, good afternoon, always read first. Thank you for your question. According to our policy, uh, bills shall be paid until the end of the given month. One answer. The other example is, how can I pay my bill? Blah, 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 you can uh, run transfer or whatever. And then a task, here is the task. User, I did not receive any bills this month. Agent, and then 
the model should continue as it's still an expert prediction. You just simply need to continue. Starts with hello, always greet first. Quite short, so the shorter is the better. I'm sorry to hear that, quite polite saying that. Please check your email spam folder or contact our support team to request a copy of the bill. Assuming that we have sent that copy, but still being polite, not saying that, oh, bloody guy, you throw it away to the base or something, saying, that, okay, please contact. But here the meaning is rather that you can find those parts of the prompt. I encourage you to use those parts and even to look for others as well, because there are, there might be others as well. I just collected the most trivial or, or most important ones. But it's maybe not enough to have the right parts of the prompt. It really helps if you can structure your prompt. So there is a form you put, I, I go it through before. Uh, so if you structure it well, like when you use bullet points, headings, or separate, you can see just you separate the prompt elements, or use special characters or marks to, to highlight something, that helps a lot. For example, roles and names, if you use them in consistent way, agent. A, like agent or user in that case, that helps a lot again for, to the, it has the model to, to have the right answer to you and to understand your question. Uh, form template, template, I will come back to that, but let, first let me show you the same example. I didn't use even different one, I just used the same example to show you that here is the marking. Here you can see the structuring thing, numbering of the examples, or uh, using consistent roles, like I put here agent, then I put here agent, agent, agent. And form template, I don't have an example for that, but just look, look at, but try to, try to imagine that as a simple text-based form you fill in. You know, there is a predefined form and you're just filling things. This form can be, oh, sorry, this form can be imagined like a form. If there is no agent, no user, no whatever, you just fill in what you want there. It's not an agent, it's a, well, I don't know, a seller or, or, or someone as not a doctor or whatever you want in, in that uh, context. So then you can just fill it in, so you can use prompts like templates or, or forms, text-based forms. Okay, now we know how the, the, the prompt should look like. Yes? By the way, in, in kind of more industrial settings, prompts are literally string templates that can be combined together uh, in multiple steps. So there, there's a basically templatable system. I think you will talk about some of the systems. Mm -hmm. um, I will talk about that. I think it's a good point to, to stop there and say that if you have a company, just a second, if you have a company and you want to do some, you want to replace or, or improve some process, company process using these kind of technologies, then you use actually this form and saying that there is a process and the, from the process, some steps are written here and some inputs and outputs from the process are also written here. And say that this will, these are the, which are coming from a certain process step and the result from the model goes to another process step. That is simply how we're So that's why thinking like a template or a form, that leads somehow for those business applications. Yes, sorry, I... Yeah, I, I have a remark about this. So, so what, what it does is, it does exactly what you want. The problem is, however, that the contents of this, yeah, what it says, is complete bomb box, isn't it? Because it, it's, <clears throat> it doesn't know anything about the organization, it does not know yes, anything. Yes, that's true. That's so true. it makes this up. It gives information as if it's the big expert, and then still it's complete box. It sounds sensible, but well, actually, if you it's give us an example, the answer contains contact or support team to request a copy. But this is an agent of the support team, so it's telling the user yes. to contact. It's but for you're right, it says in that sense, that it, it, it does not know whether there is a support team in that organization. It does, it does not know the organization. It knows that it should know that it is the customer service. But it assumes that typically in customer service, there is a support team. And that's why it says that contact, because I, I don't know, as it as does as not know the service contract or anything about as the organization. As an person, I would consider the customer service to be the support team. It's true. You know? So every contact to the given organization should go through customer service. Yes, and I'll tell you why. So, this, so. so actually, this sort of reply, if I get that as a as a customer, it is something very infuriating. 
because it's the bureaucracy pretending to, to be stupid <laughs> or being stupid, something like that. But why? Why? The models told <laughs> us that contact the customer service because using this data set, yeah. it seems that normally a customer service organization, there is a support team that learned. It's a learned information. By the way, I think what's interesting here is that this is the same contextual information that provided it to be polite, that prompted it to do this and that, could contain a description of what the customer service can or cannot do or what the contract contains. If I would have copy pasted the contract up there as like this is the contract and you have and to based on the, the contract based on the contract da 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 then already the lookup mechanism would look because the, the individual parts of the contract. Because in that case, you put the contract into the context. Yep. Then now it's part of the context. Then in context learning, that way, it can learn what is in the contract. Of course, the, the, the size limitations uh, does not really allow that. Yeah. What is it going to learn what's not in the contract? So, for example, if the contract uh, that's a, that's that's support team. Let, let me come back to that. Let me come back to that because that would be my second thought on this question. But do you have anything else on that? No, my thought would, in principle, be that it should say, I'm sorry, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, and that would be my second part. Maybe you have heard about the hallucination of these models. Mm -hmm. Because these models are, tend to say something which is the closest match to the question. <laughs> it predicts the next word based on the words what we have. It might be shit, but it's still the best out of what we know. But it does it in, in so stable and uh, convincing uh, style, or, or being uh, simply self-confident, let's say, if it's a good uh, phrase in case of a model, that you tend to believe that it's the truth, but it's not. It might I, I, simply might not be the truth. So saying that I don't know, it's not really the let's say the core of these models. On the other hand, with the with this uh, human feedback, they told the models to to be able to say I don't know. Absolutely. And by the way, if you say like all it out, uh, there is a thing called retrieval augmentation when you say like you feed additional external information mm -hmm. from PDFs to the context. You do a classical retrieval model, you pick parts of a, a big bunch of documents and put the relevant parts in. For that, if you look at the prompt, how people use the models, then give some answers, but always be conservative. Say when you don't know, that's the prompt, <laughs> with which they put it in. So they explicitly put it into the context to be silent about what it does and in the context. And then it apologizes. And it kind of apologizes and goes on to rant about the answer. to be polite or not to say something. to polite But interestingly enough, the context overrides the default behavior of wanting to say something because then it just switches over to, I can say something and that yeah. something is I don't know, which is yeah. good enough. I mean, I was able to predict the next word, yay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, another question yeah. here. Uh, yeah, I have a question. Um, uh, because I was trying out a lot this prompting with ChatGPT 5 and um, I ran into some problems in more creative tasks when I wanted to do a prompt and I tried to go in the limits, like to make a, like a very creative story. Like very frequently it blocks it off at some point and said it's inappropriate and then for the whole conversation it refuses to continue basically. And then I tried to like overcome this by saying okay make it fictional and then it would be kind of appropriate again because it's fictional, but then it will change it the whole and like some science fiction and it would be too far away from reality. So my question would be like how to come kind of overcome it because I think it limits off a lot of knowledge that there, it has. There is one thing you cannot overcome or cannot really overcome because there are ways to make it like you overcame all that is the context window. So there is a certain size of the text or time back in the, uh, in the situation, or whatever, it depends on the situation, uh, what the model can handle. If there is a, it depends on the model, actually. It, the reason why G, uh, sorry, OpenAI says every time they, uh, <coughs> with a new model, they say this is the context window now, you can, how many tokens or whatever you can use, 
that you cannot really overcome. But you can do a kind of a process to use that one. What, what do I mean? You can, you can chunk, you can split it to the chunk yourself, you know, and using, you don't use more than, I don't know, 4,000 tokens, but you know that you have how many times 4,000 tokens, and you try to use it that way, saying that, okay, now I, I split the problem into the chunks and use always that. For example, if you have, uh, if, you, if you want a bigger text than, uh, than the model can handle, you can say that you, you make a summarization of, uh, so you, you want to use, not make, use somehow a bigger text than the model can, like you have a manual here in the customer service, which is more than, than it can be handled. It can be handled. Uh, then you do summarization by the model, it already shrinks that, and then you put it into the context. But it's rather a shortcut than a real, real solution for that. Uh, by the way, for the long text generation, it is pretty explicit to say, and I think the strategy you will mention explicitly, is like generate the outline of my long storybook. <laughs> now take chapter one, generate. Yeah, we yeah. copy it out, we give it back. Okay, this was the summary of a storybook. Now take mm -hmm. chapter two and generate. And so, so basically you're slicing up the problem to context window size problem because that's the working memory you have to operate with. The only time this, this is inappropriate or this is either I refuse to generate queries, it means that it's stuck on the, the context window and it's basically run out of the working memory. However, I guess I cannot uh, prove that. Uh, also, I, it refers to something, because I do a lot of creative work, mm -hmm. and sometimes in the book it says some creative strategy, like whatever, dealing with psychology, let's say yeah. custom psychology, and then GTP said it's not appropriate because of morals. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, okay. <laughs> and this one, I, <coughs> and then I, I, what I tried, for example, is I asked ChatGTP how someone who's an admin would turn off the, the language filter. Yeah, 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 but okay. I didn't get we will come back. We will, we will yeah. come back to that later yeah. on. That's the, the last thing. I think actually tried with Bart by Google. It was okay. This is just the same as Jeff. Ah, but it didn't have, doesn't have the filters. It was also open, but you can try it. Have the filter. Bar, bar. Bar. Has bar. different bar. 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 Yeah. Okay. okay. So this is what I wanted to, to add to that. Yeah. It is my guess. I cannot prove it, but it's quite logical that when you type here, some, okay, not here, but some below here, you don't interrupt with the model. You interrupt with an interface, not necessarily human, but still not the model. And based on that, something else will be loaded to the model. You know, but you are not directly playing with the model. There is something here, yeah. which can have also limitations, can also have some kind of rules in that uh, filtering, you know, even before the model. But, yep. but they are claiming that GPT-4 is, is better now, much better in this inappropriate. It is. It is, it is <coughs> I can tell you, later on, I will talk about jailbreak, how we turn the situation somehow. And to be honest, I was struggling to find a way to do that with GPT-4. Because it, all those things which are written on the that we did this, and you know, there is this, my wife told that it's true, so it must be true. <laughs> yeah. uh, the two, two plus two is five. No, it's not. And my wife told it that, okay, it's, not, it's that. <laughs> it's not, or then, you know. Then, uh, then do anything now. Do anything you now. You are not then. You, you can do anything then. now. That does not, does not work anymore. So <laughs> that, that's true that it's included a lot. But there is one which works and which is hilarious. And we will come yeah, we will, we will uh, see two, actually two kind of solutions there.